So in the Pentagon and in the uh, intelligence community and in the defense industrial base, there's a um, pretty well-kept secret, which is that the United States has only about a thousand people who can fight at world-class levels in cyberspace. And I don't mean just offense, I mean defense as well. And we're competing with other nations that have an order of magnitude and sometimes more than that, more people with those kinds of talents. And that matters because the next wars will be characterized by a different kind of weapon. The weapons will be people because the nature of conflict in cyberspace is very rapid change. And you don't get weapons that make very rapid change, you get people that make very rapid change. So the question is, how does the United States get another, another 20 to 30,000 people who can fight at world-class levels? And, and it's tough, because the colleges aren't teaching them even a little bit. So the question is, where do you find them? And, and in a wonderful meeting with Melissa Hathaway and Jim Studeman and, and a bunch of other people in the Pentagon, an idea was, was formed, which is, hey, there are more than a million people Young people in the United States have already downloaded hacker things and are using them to change their grades and schools and all sorts of other things that they shouldn't be doing. What if 2% of those people were really world-class people and how could you tap into them? And that was the origin of this thing called the US Cyber Challenge, which is three different programs, one run by the DC3, the Defense Cyber Crime Center, one by the, run by the Air Force Association, one that we're doing called Net Wars. And this is an introduction to a young man who characterizes what we were looking for. He's a, he's a young man who, when he got into the competition, actually the second round, he did so well that the adults, this isn't just for kids. People say it's unfair that it's only the kids, that the kids have to compete with the adults. It's unfair, but it's unfair to the adults because the kids are really good. And the, these adults were saying, he's fast, he's good, who is he? And that's what we're looking for, that he's fast, he's good, who, who is he? So we're gonna talk with Michael just so you can get a sense of what it is that the nation is looking for and that it's not something that's extraordinary in the sense of earrings and spiked hair and, and, and all sorts of strange behaviors. So Michael, um, I wanted to start with how you, well maybe, Okay, I, I wanted to start with how you learned about the competition. What was your, what was your introduction to it? How did you even know it existed? Well, back in May, there was an article on Dig, uh, pointing to Forbes, that basically had information about the challenge, but it didn't actually say how to play it. Then about a month later, in the 2600 IRC channel, Security News, they had a link to the actual uh, contest, and I just clicked it, and the rest is history. Nice. The um, interesting part was the reason Forbes had the article early was that it was supposed to be announced May 29th. And if you remember, President Obama took that day to announce the new cyber, cyber strategy, so we had to move the cyber challenge back two months. So you heard about it before it was announced. Um, second question is, you're in your senior year in high school. Had you taken a bunch of computer security courses? Is that how you knew this? Uh, I've taken computer courses before at school, but they don't offer anything with security. I've taken graphic design, web design, and then computer networking repair. But I was going to take uh, programming this year, but they didn't offer it anymore. They canceled it because they didn't have a teacher to actually teach it. So they couldn't even teach programming in the high school? Okay. No. Um, once you started to play, did you find the game really hard? Uh, it was actually really hard at the beginning, but then once I mapped out the network and just kind of got used to the game and the layout of everything, it gradually got easier. Good. Uh, what was the hardest part for you? And when you got a real challenging part, did you ever feel you were in over your head? Um, the hardest part of the game was definitely at the initial point when the game started, but then as the game progressed, I was able to come up with a plan of action, but I never felt I was in over my head. I just needed to kind of figure out what to do. What did you have to do? This isn't in the script, but what did you have to do at the initial part to get in? How did you, how did, what was the hard part about getting in? Um, well, the point that was really hard was probably just, well, it wasn't hard to actually map out the network because it's just end map with the entire uh, subnet, but then, I don't know, just kind of figuring out how to actually exploit those services, and then once you got in, how can you use your access to leverage other computers? So it's a, it's real hacking. It's not it's not pretend. It's you're really breaking into systems and you're getting points for for doing it. Mm -hmm. While you're attacking computers, other people are trying to attack them. So you're defending while you're actually attacking. So other people are trying to take them away from you. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, 
What was the best part of the competition? Um, it was probably hacking the score server. I compromised the Twitter feed, and that was fun. So you compromised the score, and you gave yourself points? Yeah, 10,000. 10,000. <laughs> so <laughs> you like that, huh? So <laughs> we took some of them back, so that because it was sort of fair. But actually, um, Michael's from uh, Connecticut, and Senator Lieberman heard about him and invited him to, to meet with him. And, and, and Mike was talking to Senator Lieberman, and, and he asked, so how did you do so well? And Michael said, well, I broke into the scoring server. And a minute or two later, Senator Lieberman said, um, are you interested in being an intern in my office next? <laughs> so, I don't think they're connected. I don't, so, um, what did you want to get out of the game? What were you after? Um, when I started the game, I didn't really play for any reason. And I just kind of looked at it and said, hey, that looks pretty cool. I'll give it a shot. But I don't know. It was fun. It provided challenges that you can't really do legally unless you set it up at home. So it, alternative was doing illegal stuff, right? Yeah. All right. So did you ever wonder what you might win? Um, the original flyer for NetWars said something about uh, cyber camps. Uh, I didn't really know what that meant. And I just kind of played for the sake of playing. And if I won anything, then all the better. Cool. Um, out of curiosity, did the game take away from your homework or chores or whatever else you had to do? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, there were two rounds. The first round was. Um, I was at the beginning of the summer, so I still did schoolwork and chores when you kind of first have that original motivation to get it out of the way, but then you procrastinate till the end. Um, the round two, I didn't really do much else with that week. My mom came down into the kitchen at 2 a.m. and she found me playing the game. Playing the game all day and all night. Happy. How much time did you take to play and how, how long was it? Like the second round, how, how long, how much time was it? Was it a day and night for a few days? Yeah, well, I mostly played throughout the afternoon and then into the night. And it was a week long, so it was, I don't know, it wasn't that bad, but it definitely took a lot of time. Were you surprised when you won? Yeah, actually, I had no idea that I was going to win. I just thought that I would play. And you, then you entered the second round and played again, right? Yep. And I won both times. <laughs> Did, was the fact that you had played the first time made it easier on the second one because you already knew the map? Yeah. The Network wasn't entirely new, but there were a lot of new challenges. But being able to see the original computers, and then that would give me ideas to get into the other ones. So we're going to have to separate you out into a new space to make it fair, right? Sure. Yeah, all right. So how could you have, if you hadn't had this game, how, and you're really good, how can other kids demonstrate their skills today? What are, what, what's their, what are their options? Um, well, there aren't really many, I guess, opportunities for young hackers to develop and exercise their skills. There are a few websites that provide challenges and war games, but they don't really provide, I guess, opportunities or open doors. Um, otherwise, you would pretty much just hack random servers and illegally. Last question. Did you get any ideas about directions to take after colleges change any of your thinking about what you'd like to do? Um, well, I definitely want to do computer security. I'm not sure exactly for what, though, but I always had the idea of working for the government. And after I read the uh, article about the dark market sting, then I figured why not give uh, cyber crimes a shot. Cool. Thank you. Michael Coppola.